and welcome to Battle Streams in Middle Earth and welcome to Damien's Hobby Vlog number 26. Um, oh yes, welcome back to Battle Streams in Middle Earth. If you're new here, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Um, and this is a channel where myself and Steve Crow um, have kind of fortnightly um, live streams where we work our way through the battle games in Middle Earth uh, part work and we have um, hangouts where we look at an issue in every stream and um, and kind of try to encourage people to paint for the fun of it and to um, to help clear the backlog. So if that sort of thing interests you, go and check out the live tab over there and um, you'll see our huge, huge, huge back catalogue of, um, of uh, episodes. In addition to that, I also track my own hobby journey um, throughout the year to try and clear my own backlog and uh, that is where I'm jumping into uh, now. So uh, you saw in my last hobby vlog that I, I kind of had to abandon my, my last alliance project really. I didn't quite get the um, Heroes, Gilgalad and Lendil finished to the, the quality I wanted and that was because uh, the subject of this hobby vlog was looming and I just had to move on. So uh, this hobby vlog is going to be preparing for Warhammer World doubles. Um, which I'm very, very excited about. So we probably have, uh, I imagine the title of this one is The Road to Warhammer World Doubles 2023 or something like that. Um, but uh, I love Warhammer World Doubles um, ever since it came back in about 2017, possibly 2018. I've gone every year with my friend Adam and we, we have an absolute blast and, um, and we wouldn't miss it. So I'm super excited. We got our ticket um, a few months ago and we instantly started um, talking about what uh, what we're going to do. Now, last year we went <laughs> and we took the Defenders Variable, uh, which is the um, the Dale Army and the Iron Hills Army with Dane and Brandon Bard and all that. And we had a great weekend, but it, it was awful. It was terrible. Uh, the double scenario split you up. That legion is based on you being together. Um, and so what would happen is one of our armies would get crushed while the other army would walk slowly towards it. And, it, and we decided never again. It was un it was it was unenjoyable. And so. This year, when we started knocking ideas about it, we decided to go with some cavalry. And Adam's a big, a huge fan of the Knights of Dol Amroth. And I, of course, have been painting my b Sime Gondor army. Um, and had recently finished up the, uh, the uh, what, the nine, I think, knights that Scott Newman had sent me. Um, so they, they'd all been finished. You've seen those painted um, on, on previous hobby vlogs. And Boromir. So I suggested, well, why don't we do just do all mounted Gondor? And, and Adam was really up for it. So um, that's what we're going to do. He's tidying up his Don Amroth knights and his Imrahil, and I'm um, and he's going to take, I think, a captain and some extra knights, and then I'm going to take Boromir and knights. And because Adam's taking a captain, our numbers are quite low. So I, I'm, I was tempted to kind of take Faramir as well, but I'm just going to take um, normal knights. And what that means is I need Boromir and 13 knights. And as if you've been paying attention, I think I've, I've only got nine knights painted up. So I needed to, I needed to paint some more uh, knights to, um, to take along to, to the event. And so I bought these. I bought more knights. Um, I love this. I, I can't tell you how, how joyously happy I am about this. Um, if, if you're in any way, uh, I can't imagine you are new here, but if, if you are new, my Gondor army is an army that has only been painted up because of the live streams. Um, I didn't want a Gondor army at any point, but any time we got to an issue of the magazine that had some Gondor stuff in, I've painted it and cleared it from my backlog. And so it's been an army that has just emerged over two or three years very, very slowly. And... Um, it's been super, super exciting, and the idea that then that army becomes the army that I'm taking to events is just super, super fun. And at the start of this year, I had no painted Minister of Knights, so I didn't particularly have any desire for them. And then I painted up the ones that Scott kindly sent me um, for Secret Santa. And now, as we go into it, I was like, I need, I need more knights. I need, I need to buy some more knights. So I picked up this set. Uh, I picked up another six. I'm going to paint these guys up as well. Um, so I think I need to paint five uh, from here. Um, I think, memory says, I'll have to check my army list. But I need to get um, another bunch of knights done, um, ready for um, Troken Burn to, uh, to ride to war. Tro Troken Burn, if it doesn't make sense, uh, my partner's name, surname's Troke, my surname's O'Burn, and we cleverly melded them together into Troken Burn. So Troken Burn will be riding to war um, with some all-mounted Gondor, which I'm really, really excited about. So this vlog is going to be... Um, tracking the process of painting those models and then we'll hopefully include a little um, debrief about the tournament at the end as well. Um, in terms of timeline, I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that it's as stretched as ever. Um, it is currently um, Friday the 15th of September um, and we 
teams is in two weeks today. That's why I had to stop my last alliance stuff. Uh, it's not teams, sorry, doubles in two weeks today. So I've got two weeks basically to get these guys, guys done. So the way I'm thinking about doing this is it's about a week to kind of assemble them and get them all base coated and then I'll probably end up highlighting them one per evening as I have done in the past for the second week. So that's the plan. All sounds perfectly easy and doable on, on paper but uh, the best play plans off to go awry as we, uh, as we know. So yeah, it's Friday. I'm hoping that um, by the end of the weekend I'll have these assembled and ready to start painting and then base coats next week. Um, so that's about it. That's what this vlog's going to be doing. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope it goes well. And um, yeah, let's get stuck into this latest adventure on my B-Sime Gondor army. For Gondor! Okay, so here we are. It is Sunday night and I'm delighted to say that they are assembled and um, primed. So here we go. I'm not going to dwell too much on these because We've been here before on this channel itself with knights, and um, certainly most of you have seen lots of knights in your... What the hell is this? <laughs> that is absolutely monstrous. How the hell has this happened? Right, okay. Well, I've got no idea how that's happened, but that's going to have to be a repair job. I think I... I've probably cemented this, and I think I probably put on here a bit on here as well. So I'm going to have to try and somehow get that off there and shift that back. Well, that's a disaster. All right, let's put him aside. Hopefully, the others are right. Um, yeah, you've seen these before many times in your own lives. Um, Minister of Plastic Knights, I think big. And um, I've even done a few already on the channel, so I won't dwell on it too much. But um, I did think things were going pretty well time-wise until I just found that disaster. All the others seem to be alright. But they are um, they're done, they're good to go, and now I need to plunge in and start painting them. So, um, <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to fix that pretty quick. But um, there is a two stages to this really. I'm going to try and get all six of them kind of base coated and shaded um, over the next couple of nights. Um, and then I'm going to try and do the same thing I did um, my last batch, which was individually kind of highlight one a night. So I need kind of, I have to paint five of these. Um, I need five more for my army rather than six. So I need at least five nights of highlighting. Um, so I have to work back from that, which means the bare minimum, I'd say, for, I need to be, these need to be base coated by, by Friday. These need to be ready for the highlight by Friday to then have a very productive week next week. So that's what I'm aiming for. That I would come back and show you these all all base coated and sort of dry brushed with some washes on by by Friday. And if we can manage that, and we can fix this disaster, um, then we've got a chance of getting ready for doubles. So um, yeah, let's get stuck in. All right, guys. So it is time for an update. Uh, as you can see, the good news is they are all base coated and shaded. And I believe in my last clip I said that I wanted this to be done by Friday evening. Well, it's currently. Tuesday evening. Now I did get these, um, it's not been a complete disaster, I did get these done by Saturday evening so they were, um, it was a day later than expected um, but um, not too bad. So these have all been completely base coated, shaded and um, all the washes have done on all these four. You'll also see that just like last time I did some nights on my last time vlog, you should be able to go in and see that the, the faces are finished as well. So the faces on all of them have been done. Um, the backs of the shields, which you probably can't see too much because it's got quite dark, have some lines painted onto them. That's been done on all of them. And the gold highlight has been done on all of them. And the horses, eyes and tongues have been done. So that's the stage I got to. Uh, the reason I've done some highlights on all of them is that um, those are the highlights that basically I always feel like um, <clears throat> if I'm going to put the paint on the palette, it's just not worth it. You know, if you're doing white eyes it's not worth doing it for one model, it's a, it's a waste of paint. So I've done all the kind of small parts, that's why the tiny little bits of flesh um, and the tiny little bits of gold have all been done. I'm pretty happy with their faces, I haven't, I haven't struggled too much with them but they they look pretty good for warriors I think. Um, but yeah, other than that it's all base coating and shading. Um, and I got that finished by Saturday night. However, as I said, it is now Tuesday um, and I've deliberately kept this guy here. This guy is finished. So on Tuesday night, this guy is completely finished. As you can probably, he's had all his highlights done and is ready to go, obviously, about the base room. I'm not going to go through the colours because I've done it multiple times before on the channel. 
Um, but yeah, he's now completely finished because I'm doing exactly the same I did the last um, last time I did the knights, which was to um, base coat them all and then highlight them one at a time, one per evening. And as I said, I um, have got five knights to do. One of them has been abandoned already. I only need five for the tournament. Um, so one of them, as you can see, isn't here because he hasn't got a chance of being finished. And what I thought was if they were all base coated and shaded and then I'd do one a night and I can't I couldn't paint on Sunday so that means I needed Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five nights to um to paint my nights. But unfortunately I didn't get these done until Saturday night. So that meant I had four nights to do them. Uh so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I didn't paint anything on Monday. So here we are on Tuesday night. I'm about to start painting my second one. Um uh I've done one and I've got three evenings left. So three evenings left to do four nights, um, and that doesn't work. <laughs> but bluntly, that doesn't work. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I can do Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. I don't know when this guy gets paid in. Um, so we'll we'll have to wait and see. I'm gonna. I'm, I'd need to get him done, obviously, and I will, I will try to squeeze in an hour and a half somewhere. An extra hour and a half because oh yeah that's the other thing I said um, I think I, I think in the last video that I did nights I said it took an hour and forty minutes to do the highlights the good news is that for whatever reason um, this time it takes me about an hour and a half to do the highlights um, on on this guy so um, I don't know maybe I did a few more stages in terms of the flesh and the um, the gold and those kind of things I, I don't really know but this guy took me an hour and a half to finish so the idea is it's quite nice and quite good fun but I just get to take one of these every night and paint him for an hour and a half and finish him off to get him to this standard but there is a, certainly a missing evening so that's where we are feeling pretty good happy with the progress and would be more than happy on any other time but it is getting a bit um, twitchy uh, because, like I said, I've I've got one less night than I need. So I think what I'm going to do is try and maybe I've got three work days, so maybe at lunchtime on the days I'm working from home, see if I can grab kind of 45 minutes or something like that, and see if I can finish the extra one. But yeah, uh, that's where we are, and I will hopefully check in with you next on Thursday night when I hope somehow I've been able to get these four done as well. So I will see you then. Okay, so it is update time and I am delighted to say they are done. Oh my yes, my six nights are done. Um, yep, as you can see, um, more better than expected really because I'd, I'd kind of abandoned one of them but I managed to find the time to get all six done which is super, super cool. Um, I can't honestly remember if I showed you any of these highlighted. You've obviously seen highlighted nights on the, on the vlog before. Um, but I can't remember if the, the last time I recorded uh, a clip for this whether or not you've seen any of them. But anyway, all six are now done. Um, I won't go through them in, in too much detail because it's exactly the same um, colour scheme as on my previous night. So if you want to see the colours, just go back and um, look at those. I think it had got to the point, I showed you where all the faces have been done and all the details have been done, but I hadn't done highlights on any nights. But uh, the armour is, the, the kind of Minas Tirith guys are just Steve Crow's old um, How to Paint a Minas Tirith Warrior vlogs. And the, the their horses are basically a bright highlight of Doomball Brown. Let's see where it works. Well, this looks pretty good. Um, over that kind of cyborg brown um, base coat. It's a bright highlight of Dimble Brown and then shaded back down with Rhinox Hide. Um, that's it. And I think it looks, I think it does a really good job for kind of um, bulk horses at a distance. Da -da -da. They came out well. So here is six more nights. Really, really pleased. It's Thursday evening. I'm off to doubles tomorrow. Um, so managed to get them done and what I'm really happy about is I don't have this one night hanging over me to come back to next week this guy's cool, I really like this one with the dipped lance he looks funky uh, but there we go, so six nights done very very happy, I think they look cool nothing special, I'm not going to win any painting awards or anything like that but um, they, look, they look cool from a distance on the table which is the point of my B-Sime army and now just before I head off to doubles what I thought it would be cool to do is show you my whole army for the weekend all right, and here is the army in all of its glory, and we are once more um, deployed upon Old Faithful, uh, my Minister of Display Board. Um, anyone who's followed my blogs will have seen this fairly recently when I took it to the GT, and will know that if you watch that vlog, that this is my board from about four years ago when I took it to the GT for um, the Army of the Dead. So it was it was repurposed um, in February to be this one, uh, which was the kind of the my Gon my B side Gondor army fighting against the Army of Gothmog. And obviously, I kind of suggested to Adam for doubles. I was like, "Well, why don't we, why don't we bring it along uh, for this? Because it's still Gondory. It fits the theme." Um, so yeah, they, these are my guys here. Are, I, I mean, they look cool. I'm very excited. 
Uh, so it, my army is Boromir uh, with the flag and with a shield on horse and 13 Knights of Minas Tirith with shields and lances. Um, I think I'm, it comes to 397 points. And of course this won't be the whole army, it's doubles. So they're going to be joined by Adam's army, which is um, Prince Imrahil of Dolomroth. Um, and then I think he's got Adamir, who's his uh, captain of Dolomroth. And I believe he's got six knights of Dolomroth, one of whom has a banner. Um, so that's going to be our full, uh, full mounted army for the glory of Gondor. It's very, very exciting. Um, and yeah, that's I, I think it's mega. These are, of course, nine of these knights were from Scott Newman, um, who gave them to me for Secret Santa um, back in 2021. So thank you, Scott. It's really, really cool. I hope, I hope you're happy seeing your models having achieved their potential. And um, thanks for the gift. It was awesome. Um, when you sent me those, I, I don't think I ever imagined a fully mounted uh, Gondor army being taken by me, but it's just wonderful. And the, um, the kind of, it, it's a really joyous celebration of this hobby and this channel that this b Sime Gondor army is, is, is once more riding into a, an army that only exists through the generosity of patrons and Sebastian Rat's Amazing Secret Centre and because of the streams and the, the fun we've had painting stuff up. But of course, as you can imagine, uh, it wasn't quite finished because um, previously, uh, you would have seen back in February, this board said there's plenty for the both of us, may the best dwarf win. And um, that wasn't appropriate for Boromir fighting and Faramir fighting against Gothmog. As I went with, by the blood of our people, your lands kept safe, as the generic um, thing about Gondor fighting for the good of the free peoples. And for this, we wanted something different. And so we have this this time <laughs> Amroth for Gondor, Amroth to Boromir. Um, so this is obviously again, um, there isn't a scene where Boromir and the knights and Amroth fight together and Prince Imriel fight together, but it seems plausible. It seems plausible that in happier times they would have ridden to war. And we kind of took this quote um, from the from the Sally uh, at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields where they say, Amroth for Gondor, Amroth to Faramir, and they race out to him and it seems it seems appropriate for our um for our board, uh, it'll look a bit make like it look like it makes more sense when um, <laughs> uh, when the Amroth guys are on there as well. Um, I will say, um, normally my good lady wife does these one one of these wonderful calligraphy handwritten um, banners. This time, because this was such a this it was all such a last minute thing, <laughs> I just we just didn't have time. I asked her last, I, uh, no, it was tonight. In fact, it's Thursday. I just said to her, "Any chance of this?" And she was like, "No, not tonight." So uh, sadly, this is this is not up to her usual standards. This is just a printout, um, but um, hopefully it'll do. And as crappy as it looks, I have to say I love the fact that I don't know if you can see here. I've kind of repainted this where the old banner broke off. I don't know if you can see the difference here. There's a different guy. There's a hole here or a giant bit of it kind of caved out and whilst part of me would like to kind of fill that in and repaint it and touch it up I also really really like the um the degrading nature of this board you know this is the third time I've taken to an event and it's got history in it you can see the history of this board um which is kind of fun so yeah I'm, I'm mega happy I like how the force looks um I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to use and I can't wait to get to doubles um team up with Adam again so that Trokenburn can ride to war once more for Gondor and hopefully I will come back after doubles with a debrief of the event well I'm back and for the fourth and hopefully final time um, in recent vlog history. I've actually been back for quite a long time, but I am catching up and um, Warhammer Doubles was only six weeks ago, which based on some of the um, tournaments I've had to kind of recall the game from makes it positively recent. So fingers crossed, I'll be able to um, reflect on this one quite well. So yes, back from Warhammer Doubles, and I'm gonna give you a kind of breakdown of um of what went went on basically so um yeah settle down grab your brushes and i'll talk you through the tournament and how trokenburn got on the warhammer doubles so um as you saw in the last clip i managed to get my nights finished so yes on friday afternoon i picked up my good friend and sbg brother in arms mr thomas harrison and we headed uh headed north um uh we had a slightly unusual friday night in, uh, we met up with some of the guys, um, including Cal and Alex, and we went to see a wrestling show. This is very unlike us, but we went to see a certain Mr. Johnny Sharp, who I'm sure some of you will be uh, familiar with and will know the significance of um, wrestling, and it was awesome. So we had a, we had a cracking night out with good friends inside and outside the ring. 
And um, yeah, congratulations to Johnny Sharp. Uh, he, were, he was on fine form and he got the win that night. So yeah, that was a bit of a cool night out, but a different night out. I think we headed back um, and had some enjoyable debrief drinks in the bar discussing all things Middle Earth, which was super, super fun. So the tournament proper began on... Um, on Saturday morning, I arrived and met up with Adam, and together Troke and O'Burn became Troke and Burn for the lots of time that we've uh, that we've played together. And yeah, um, we got our toys out. I think I've already gone through the army like with you in a previous clip, but um, it won't take long. It's Prince Imre Hill. Um, uh, obviously, everything's mounted, but it's Prince Imre Hill. Then a captain of Dolomroth called Adamir, and I think it was six Dolomroth knights, one of whom had a banner. And I had Boromir uh, with the banner and um, 13 Minas Tirith Knights. So we had a 6 inch banner from Boromir, a 12 inch banner from um, Imrahil, and then another banner as well because Adam just loves the banner model um, and he likes to have the colours flying when he uses Dolan Rough. So we had banners everywhere really, uh, which was cool. And our first game, and again, I've done my absolute best to kind of dig through my notes and. Um, Rem remember as much as I can, but there's a couple of people whose names I just can't remember, so apologies. But our first game was a game of Taken Hold. I should really get some match play mode out so that I um, so that I don't have to embarrass myself here. It was Taken Hold against a team called Little and Large, uh, which was David Jackson and his partner. And I'm sorry to David's partner, I can't remember his partner's name, but they had um, a an Iron Hills army, which I think had Dane in it. And then they had an elf army, a high elf army, and it was taken hold, which is where there's a kind of whole ground objective in the middle, and you start in opposite corners. We had the speed advantage, so what that meant was we were able to pick the um, uh, army that we'd fight against. And we had a bit of a debate about which one we should go for, and I really didn't want to go for the elves, because the elves, um, I think my main issue was the fight value, they'd beat our fight value. Um, and Adam didn't want to go for the dwarves um, because they'd be hard to kill. Um, and in the end, we uh, Adam kind of gave in, and we went we went for the dwarves. And we we charged into the dwarves, and and I don't remember too much about it. It was it was an early on game, but we just got spanked. We got spanked by the dwarves. We just couldn't um, we couldn't kill them. I feel like maybe the Dolan Roth reached the dwarves before the Boromir did or something. I can't imagine why we we wouldn't wait. I, I don't really remember. But I just remember that I think Dave was able to use the scenery really well so that we couldn't really bring our numbers to bear. I feel like I got kind of held up by a field with some um, like boundaries quite a lot, um, which which was quite annoying. Um, so, that, you know, my cavalry would have to kind of walk around a field and that sort of stuff to charge things. And he was making really good use of the scenery so that we couldn't kind of... Um, he was protecting his flanks. He definitely did have Dane because I spent... That was it. I spent a lot of the game trying to deal with Dane and his warband and Adam um, kind of was dealing with the other Iron Hills warband and I think I did eventually manage to get rid of Dane I managed to kind of kill him and break through that stuff but by that point all the all the elves had kind of marched into the middle and it was a little uh, a little bit too little too late and um, and we and we lost the game um, they, they seized the middle um, and it was it was one of those things where we said afterwards, we think we had a good matchup, a good scenario, and we had good tactics, and, and we just lost quite badly. Um, and we were kind of saying, I think if we played it again, we'd probably do everything exactly the same and hope to win. Uh, but yeah, it just didn't didn't fall for us. But far more importantly, it was a truly truly lovely game. Um, speaking of lovely games, I should probably mention that um, this is a Throne of Skulls event. Um, and if any of you are familiar, not familiar with that, what that means is you can get up to six points for, for each game, or six games, you get up to six points for each game. So if you get a major win, which is double VP, you get six, and I think a minor win was five, and then I feel like maybe um, a major loss was one, and a minor loss was two, and a draw was three, something like that. Um, but yeah, so you've got six games, you can score, you can score 36 points um, for, for that. And also, at the end of the tournament, you vote for your, you get two votes, and you vote for your two favourite games and your two favourite armies that you played against. And every vote you get is three points. So what that means is you're going to play six games. So in theory, you could get all six favourite game votes when you get 18 points. 
and you could get all six favourite army votes, in which case you'll get 18 points. So 36 points are available for your um, sportsmanship and your army, not best paintedness, but how much people like your army. So army, hobby, theme, um, painting, whatever that is. Um, so 36 points available for that stuff and 36 points for winning. So I love it. I love the Throne of Skull scoring system because it means you have to win. It's still Swiss ranked, still Swiss ranked tournament. So you have to win games, but you have to win games in a in a nice manner to do well. But the um, the points are even. There are the same amount of points available for winning games as there are for um, the kind of soft scores for sportsmanship. So there we go. So we we lost our first game, but we hit, we had a we had a really really brilliant game, brilliant game with it, um, and we just loved it. And the guy the guys were really great. And once again, apologies to. Uh, Dave's partner, if I not remember his name. Oh, we then had some delicious lunch. Uh, I didn't enter anything into the painting competition because it was it, I just had my B-Sime army. Um, and then we played... <laughs> oh dear, sorry, excuse me. Uh, we then played No Escape versus a team called Baguette and Churro. And that was um, Francois Santi. And I, again, I'm sorry, I can't remember his partner's name. But that is the slightly complicated deployment, which looks like this. You have the four strips, you know, where A, B, A, B, that sort of thing. Um, so you're kind of divided into four lines and, and sort of split up. And uh, you get points for wounding the enemy leader, breaking the enemy, keeping banners alive, and killing. There's two leaders. Um, you get points for killing both leaders. So a, a kind of to the death one, but with some cool deployment. And we're playing... Um, uh, Azog and Bolg. Um, I've got one one picture of it here, which I'll um, I will try and put up for you. Um, I think I just took take, took the one for this game. Apologies, I didn't take any from the first game. Um, but you can see how the lines clash. That basically we had Adams, Dol and Roth in the middle fighting Azog, and then um, the Knights of Minas Tirith riding to the rescue, whilst um, Bolg and the Hunter Orcs were also riding to the rescue. And we just ended up with a massive scrap in the middle. And it was really, really super cool. I was able to um, get to the rescue first because of my speed. I was faster than the Hunter Orcs. And the Knights of Gondor just did just did glorious work against the Gundabads. I just I was able to kind of like just mow down the Gundabad line, which was great. But of course that wasn't really that important. It helps towards breaking them, but it's all gonna be on whether Imrahil and Boromir can take down Azog and Bolg or vice versa and again I can't honestly remember what happened here but I remember a lot of they were, everyone was fighting really close together you can probably hopefully see in the photo that that's um, Bolg then Imrahil, Imrahil then Azog while Boromir has been dismounted oh I feel Boromir I think he got dismounted by a heroic shot from Nazog like from across the board I feel like he had like <laughs> three or four in the ways and then into the combat and then got to the horse and then killed the horse. It was a magnificent shot but very, very frustrating. And I can't quite remember how these happened. I feel like Bolg, we chipped away and chipped away and chipped away at and eventually were able to bring him down. But I'm pretty sure we were kind of out of might. And so Bolg had the fight advantage. He was fight seven where Boromir was trying to deal with Azog. And I think we were getting into the point where we were just having to charge into him and hope he didn't get the um hope he didn't get the the six basically and you have that dilemma of once you do win a fight against him you, you kind of want to kill his warg take that one strike to kill the warg to get him off but equally one strike might get a wound on him to get you the vps but it won't kill him and if the game goes on he's then on a warg if he wins priority so we had a lot of i feel like there was a lot of really really tense combats around um around around bolg and around azog and like I say, I, I truly can't remember um, what went down at the end and how, how it all pa um, played out, but um, we managed to win. So I, I I don't know, maybe we just killed Bolg and kept our two alive, I'm not sure. Maybe we killed Bolg, Bolg and Azog, I don't remember, but the um, it it worked <laughs> and we managed to fight through. Um, what I will say was it was the first time where we saw our line, and I haven't got a great photo of it yet, but our line of cav hitting and it just looked fabulous we were already realizing what a spectacularly fun army um, we'd brought along and when you're deploying like 20 mounted models shiny armor mounted models and just charging them headlong um, it was glorious because 
I think normally people associate all cav with things like Rohan or Rivendell Knights, where you kind of shoot people and run away, that kind of thing. But we were we had an all cav army where we were just charging. We had no shooting, we had no magic. Our only option was charge full pelt into them and just a scream for Gondor and um and hope for the best. And it was just brilliant. It was just brilliant fun. So um yeah. So I think we got the point. Maybe we maybe won it as well because we broke them. I think I feel like we definitely broke them but didn't get broken. So maybe that was what swung it as well. Um but yeah, so really good game again. And I will remember I think it was Santi's part. <laughs> Yeah, something I'd never seen. We kept his dice in his pocket, and he would he would roll them by getting them out and throwing them in one motion. So it's like it's like a like someone from the Wild West drawing. And me and Adam both said in all, you know, we've been playing, you know, this game for both for twenty years, war games for thirty years. But we we're like, I've never seen anyone do that before. We're just going to go, and it was great. And it was hilarious. Um, but they were they were super super lovely guys. It was another brilliant brilliant game. It, um, played in really really good spirits, and um, and yeah. So cheers guys, and again apologies to Santi's partner because I can't remember his name. Um, next up we had a duel of wits against the imaginatively titled uh, "Do You Wear Wigs?" And I think they were called that because both of the guys had um, quite elaborate hairstyles, which I presume um, had drawn some questions about whether or not they wore wigs. But we were playing um, Ben Baradale and Zach Richardson, and they had a Mafama Hood and Mordor Alliance. And in Duel of Wits, what we're we doing here, um, again, we're kind of deploying in corners, in opposing corners, and, um, oh yeah, it's the one where you write down an enemy target um, to be a secret. Um, so you pick a hero that, I pick a hero I want to kill, Adam picks a hero that he wants to kill, but we're not allowed to discuss it, we're not allowed to tell each other um, how to do it. Um, and then you get you get victory points for killing them, and then you also get victory points for banners and breaking. But you also get victory points if a top one of your heroes that your opponent picked as a target is in the middle at the end. So if you can keep your hero alive and keep him to the middle, you get, you um, you get um, points. Now this is really fun. I really like it as a concept. Um, you you know you're kind of having. Um, I like the mystery stuff. It's very, it feels very narrative. It feels very fun, and it's a cool idea. But you have to trust the people playing it, right? Not just your part, you know, your partner, but everyone else. And I just wonder how much. And you know, me and Adam are, and, and I think our opponents, and I, you'd like to think everyone there, um, tons and tons of integrity, and you're not going to cheat, but. In a competitive tournament, it's the sort of thing that just feels like, you know, super, super gaming competitive players will probably just tell each other who their target is, um, which is a shame. Maybe I'm judging people wrongly, but and there's a little bit on it that I'll talk about later that I think kind of kind of does it. But I love it as a concept. I really, really love it as a concept. But it's just one of those things that is is hot, actually quite hard to to um, enforce. Whatever. Anywho, um, yeah. So. Um, Da, 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 da. Which hero was it? I think it was Ben who had them a hood, and he had a bunch of camels, which were quite scary, um, and some warriors with blowpipes. And then um, Zach had, I think, the Witch King. I want to say on horse and some orcs. He had a Mordor army. So again, we got because of our speed, we got to pick who we attacked. And this this was again the sort of thing that immediately you you, you can't tell each other who your hero is, but. As a pair, we had to decide which army to attack. And so I'd picked one of the Mahood heroes, one of the Mahood kings. So I said to Adam, um, I think we should go and attack the Mahood. And Adam went, I also think we should go and attack the Mahood. And I was like, cool. So in your head, you're kind of like, I don't think that's against the spirit of it, but it's like, well, his target's probably one of the Mahood heroes. Do, do you see what I mean? It's a kind of interesting thing there. Uh, but anyway, we charged in. And... I think Adam reached him first, and the camels battered him, as memory serves. He, I think he lost a key heroic roll-off, and he got to them like one turn before I could. And I just feel like he was crunched, absolutely crunched, by, um, by a couple of camels. And he just kept doing all the impact hits and charging through. And, um, and then I, I, went, you know, I charged in the following turn and was kind of fighting my way through and all that. And, um, uh, you know, did... 
you know, did everything I could to kind of like fight fight back through. And once Boromir with the banner and fourteen knights charges in, um, assisted by the you know what was left of the Dolan Roth force, they 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 turn the tide a bit there. And I remember getting a a heroic combat I was really pleased with where. Adams, I think his captain and Imre Hill were in real trouble against maybe some Mahood heroes. And Boromir and like five knights were able to get on one guy and heroic combat in and not only kill more but pair that off and suddenly save kind of Imre Hill and save the captain, I, th I think. And in doing so, killed one of the Mahood kings as well. You know, Boromir, fight seven Boromir, heroic combats into a Mahood king, something like that. And that was my hero, so the, my target. So I was able to get rid of um, him. And um, and I think then we took we took down the other um, king, and because the orcs were all on foot, they took a while to get there, and so we'd managed to kill like the two Mahood heroes, and then here's where the here's where the game falls down a bit. Bear in mind you're trying to fight and you're trying to break, but also we want to get. Um, can they pick? Can you pick the leaders for this? Yeah, it can. It can. So once we kill the Mahood heroes, we really want to get Imrahil, the captain, and Boromir into the middle. And so, but we're not allowed to talk about who our targets are. So I said to Adam, I think we should go towards the middle now. And Adam went, I don't think we should go towards the middle. And the Witch King's there. I, like, I don't think we should go towards the middle now. And you're having a discussion, like a reasonable discussion about tactics for the game based on, well, okay, let's, the next best thing is to try and get the VPs for the middle. And Adam, and Adam, Adam's going to go, well, I don't, I don't think we should do that. I think, I think we should keep trying to kill these guys. And it's this sort of thing where you're, you're, you're categorically not, you're trying to play in the spirit of the game. But I'm then thinking, well, the only reason he'd think that is one of his targets, one of the mortal heroes, and so on and so forth. So that's where it kind of falls down a bit. That when you're actually trying to discuss with your partner, and you're not trying to break the game, you're not trying to discuss who your targets are, but you're trying to discuss, okay, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to break them now? Are we trying to get to the middle? Are we trying to kind of shield so that we don't break them? You know, those kind of decisions, they're kind of impacted by who your target is. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those weird things. As I said, we did, we did our absolute best to play like with full kind of integrity. Um, and then Adam... <laughs> <laughs> suddenly seemed very very keen on killing the witch king <laughs> and was getting a bit the witch king was kind of escaping and was getting a bit and Adam was getting a bit desperate to try and get into him and that he eventually caught him and um, like killed the witch king and I remember saying to the other guy like, what's that about and he was like that was my target and I was like what and I was like I, I spent the whole game thinking that my hood king was your target that's why we ganged up on them he was like, no, no, it was the Witch King. I was like, oh, bloody hell. And we and we won. And I maybe, I can't remember again the VPs, but I think we might have won because we got the Witch King. And so if we hadn't got the Witch King, we might not have won or whatever. But um, it was brilliant. It was, it was another absolutely fantastic game um, that that we loved. And there were, there were just so many laughs in that. And the guys, um, Zach and Ben, were just, were just really, really great. Um... I didn't actually talk about this, but I might have put it up at the time. But again, you you start to see how cool. I'm just looking through a fade out of the pictures. You start to see how cool the army looks when you um when you punch it all together, when you when you kind of put it all together, um and and all those mounted models just kind of riding riding across the table towards each other. It was absolutely it was absolutely class. Um, so yeah, uh, that was um that was the game. So we managed to get the win. Um, which was great. I think it was a major win. Um, I can't quite remember our kind of major minor win split, um, but uh, I think we managed to get a major in the end. And um, yeah, and then that was the end of of day one of the games. Um, so we headed into um, uh, we headed into Bugman's and we had the usual um, kind of um, taste taste dinner. Jay did um, a pub quiz. As always, which was brilliant. Um, I've talked about this on the stream, but he did this. I'll do it quickly here as well. He did this brilliant round where one new round where one player from each team goes outside of the room, um, and then the rest of the team are asked 10 questions, and then that player comes back in, and the player, whilst not looking at the team, is asked the same 10 questions. And 
you get a point if you give the same answer that your team did. So the team are kind of predicting what you would say. So there were things like, um, who's the best member of the fellowship? What's the best scenario? Who's got the best armor? Merry or Pippin? Um, name a model with a terror special rule. Uh, give another name for Gandalf. Uh, there was a wonderful one that was, who's the best SBG player on your on your quiz team? And so I had to stand up and say Tom Harrison, which you know hurt me in my soul. Um, but it was a it was a brilliant round. It was tons and tons and tons of fun. So I'm hoping that that sticks around for the um, tournaments going forwards because that was that was a really good idea. So uh, massive props to Jay. That was awesome. And we were also um, able to get, I th again, I'll try and pop it up here, I'm not sure if I will, but um, the four of us, the four of our, our Wanderers, our good old, uh, not all those you wander are lost, um, myself and Adam were playing, and Tom, who I'd come up with, was playing with Jay. So we have four Wanderers playing in pairs, and we were all in our you know, matching 2023 um, polo shirts this year, so that was cool. Um, so it's good to see them, and they were getting on um, quite well as well. Um, so yeah, then we, um, I think, the usual headed back to the... Either the beef eater or the holiday in bar for some drinks and debrief. It's always just nice, just hanging out, chatting about the hobby, and then headed to bed. And then we were up early the next morning and headed in for our first game of day two, which was cornered against Rough and Ready, which is a great name for a team. Um, and oh, I've gone to sleep. Um, Rough and Ready was um, Dan Abbott and Ryan Locke, who I had we had met in the past, but I don't think I'd played. Um, I, knew, I knew the guys, I knew them like by face, but um, I, we, I don't think we'd, we'd um, actually played it at all. And it was cornered, which is uh, this deployment. So one player's army starts in the middle, the rest of the whole enemy force deploys here, and then one player saves the day um, here. And Dan and Ryan had a really, really cool Isengard army. Sort of thing that you don't see a lot anymore. It wasn't the Assault on Helm's Deep Legion. It wasn't Uglet Scouts. It was just kind of old-fashioned Isengard soup. Just cool Isengard stuff. And it just seemed like the sort of army from two guys who really liked Isengard who just brought all their favourite toys. So they had, they had quite a lot of heroes. I feel like they had Lurtz, Ugluck, Gorolf... Um, Brasku, I think. They definitely had those four. Uh, maybe one more. Um, and and then just tons of mainly fighting Uruk High, um, some Warg Riders, I think, and some um, Berserkers. And when I saw it, as much as there was quite a lot of models and they were fight four, when I saw the two armies, I was like, I think that's a pretty good matchup for us. They haven't got any crazy good heroes. Imrahil and Adamir and Boromir should be able to take down their heroes. Blah, 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 blah. Then I saw the scenario, and I was like, I think this is a pretty good scenario for us as well. Whichever way around it goes, because of the speed. And so, as we deployed, Adam got put in the middle. And so he deployed himself right to the kind of edge of one circle. And there was this big open area here, where there would be plenty of room for their army. So we thought, um, we thought, well, if they then deploy there, Boromir comes on behind them, and we'll just, we'll just crunch them on the other side. But they didn't deploy there. There were also then four woods around the board where there wasn't room for their army, but there was room for bits of their army in between each wood. And so they deployed, they kind of split their army up, but deployed in these gaps where only two or three cavalry models could charge them, based on the gaps between the woods. Um, I'm just having a look at the picture that I've got of the game. Yeah, I can, I'll put this picture up um, to kind of show you... Um, the kind of deployment. I'll try and I'll have to crop it a bit to to avoid spoilers here. See if I can do this. Who knows? But there was basically you can see this kind of three woods, um, kind of going down the board, and they deployed in those gaps so that when we came on, they'd have these big kind of pike, you know, berserker with some pikes supporting it, and we could only ever charge three cav models in. Um, you know, my gl my glorious riding to Emre Hill's rescue would just be three guys going in, going in the back. And it went from going, this is a good matchup and a good scenario, to going, I don't think we can possibly win this. You know, we were like, how can we possibly bring our numbers to bear? So um, well done to Dan and Ryan, because they deployed brilliantly. I mean, fantastic use of the scenery to um, to kind of give them the best advantage. And then it kind of happened. Adam went full pelt for the um, for the guys at the, at the top of the board. And then so I, I charged into the back of them, and Boromir went in the middle. Um, and tried to start hacking through, and um, 
and I, I feel like Adam did kind of really well, like punch through a bunch of stuff. I sent a few nights in, but um, uh, to kind of try and help him, you know, kind of crush him from both sides. But my nights were only fight three because they were away from the banner because Boromir was fighting, you know, a forest away. Um, and suddenly, like a, a fight three model with two attacks charging into three attacks from pikes at fight four, the knights were losing. Um, so it was a bit sad. And we were like, oh god, we're in trouble here. And then, I don't really know quite how, but just over the course of a couple of turns, I guess we got the we got lucky on the heroics. Um, and we just started to kill stuff and punch through. And I've got to say, Boromir was an absolute beast. I, I don't think Boromir in that game lost a fight. I don't think he lost a duel. He, he won everything. And he didn't need to use might to win everything. He just kept getting the natural sixes. And he just munched through the centre of the army. I remember in one game, he one turn, he charged... I feel like it was Vrasku and a guy. So that's Vrasku with two wings of fate and a bloke. And I, because we felt like we were running out of time, we had to get to the centre. This is, you know, I think it's... Um, it's uh, Imrahil was key in this scenario because it's like... Um, Dan and Ryan are trying to kill him Hill and we're trying to protect him Hill, but then you also get the points for being within range of the middle. So you have to get to the middle, and most of my army is now miles away from the middle, basically. Um, and, um, yeah, so I'm trying to fight towards the middle, and I charged Vrasku and uh, one Uruk, and there was one of his other heroes, I think it might have been Goroth? possibly. Um, I can't remember which round it was, but within range. And so I called a right combat, and I, I remember Adam being like, that's, that's risky. I was like, no, I, I, I trust in Boromir. And so he did the, you know, he, first two, he's got four strikes charged on a horse, doubled. First two, did a wound on Rascu. Second two, did a wound on Rascu. Two wounds on Rascu, killed. Like, third one, did a wound on Rascu, which took his fate point. Uh, fourth one killed the Uruk, so wiped out Vraskin one, then went on to Gorov and killed him in one as well. And uh, it was something like that, but you know, managed to kill two heroes in the same go. And suddenly, um, Imrahil or Adamir had taken down Ugluck, and um, suddenly we were, you know, they the only hero they had left was Lurtz, and Lurtz was leading a few guys to the middle to hold the middle. And you know, they, they were clearly about to break, so they wanted to keep that hero to, to kind of keep him in the game. And um, we were just punching our way through and punching our way through, and like kind of you know it, it was almost it was the proper charge of the of the Pelena of the Ride of the Rohirrim just with Gondor you know the glorious charge of of the of the knights just cutting down all these orcs left right and centre, um, but of course that's not the scenario, and when they broke and we we did our best to try and not break them obviously at one point before we were in position but you can't really not break them with knights on lances with lances it's not like you can shield or whatever. And um, and they were broken, and they were in the middle, and we were like, you know, eight inches away from the middle, staring at them with our lances, and if the game ended this turn, they'd win, and it's that roll of dice, and on one or two it ends, and it didn't end, <laughs> like a Luke <laughs> and um, and then we charged in, and I th I think there, there was definitely a turn where if it had ended on the first time asking, they would have won, but I think after that. We then got in, and suddenly we'd fought through the the kind of dregs that they were using to hold us up, and got in. I think, I think Boromir got into Lurtz, killed him, and suddenly like Boromir and Imrahil were back in the middle, just kind of, you know, um, rinsing through what was left of the orcs, and and then I feel like the game then, you know, it could have been like a minor win to us the next turn or something, and then I just feel like the game didn't end for about four or five turns. Um, which was just grim, just absolutely grim for Dan and Ryan. And um, it just allowed us to completely sweep things up. And if I look at this, I believe this picture I've got is the final positions. And as you can see, we're, we're taking a hell of a lot of casualties, but it looks to me like we've got Boromir, Imrahil, the Dolomroth banner, and one knight left. And you can see over at the side, the entire Isengard army has been wiped out. So we only had four models, but two of them were kind of like you know most important models. And we were able to kind of hold the centre completely um, by the end of the game. But it was absolutely brilliant. It was a great game. And what was really good about that is 
I'd like to think me and Adam were playing in good spirits when we thought we couldn't win, and then Dan and Ryan were playing in great spirits when it turned against them. And it was just it was just a lovely, lovely game. Um, they were they were really nice guys and took it in really, really good grace when um, you know, that dice went against them. And as as SPG players, I think we always have we always have the tendency to say when whole ground or whatever comes up, we go, oh, I, I never roll that dice, you know, the one or two. Whenever I want it to end, it never ends. Whenever I don't want it to end, it always ends. And I'm going to use this game as my memory. Like, next time whole ground goes against me, I'm going to be like, oh, it never goes my way. I'm going to think back on this one and go, no, hang on, it did go your way that time. And I think we always forget about the times it goes our way and remember the times it doesn't. It's like this was very much a game when that crucial, crucial role went our way. So yeah, um, cheers to um, cheers to Dan and Ryan. Uh, they were they were really it was a lovely army and a great game. It was a really good start to the day. And not only that, but during that game, the event staff came over and told us we got a best army nomination. Amaze! So we were we were delighted with that and just kind of giggling about it because like um, Adam's knights are certainly painted better than mine, but Adam's knights were painted a long time ago. I think he did a bit of touching up on them. It wasn't something he'd painted new for the event. And as for me, when you follow the journey, you know what my knights are. My knights are, you know, models I don't really want. They're just speed painted for the love of the hobby. And Boromir was speed painted for the GT back in February. He doesn't have the banner on his flag, but it was just a testament to how cool the army looks from a distance. I don't think, and I don't think, I don't think Adam would mind me saying this, I don't think any of our models were painted to like our best abilities. But when you put the 20 of them together, it just looked so cool. And I don't think you get a lot of people using just all mounted Gondor. So I think it, it's quite unusual to see it as well. And so, um, and you know, the little board I brought that we had as our display board, it, it looked cool deployed on it. So I think it was that kind of, it was the overall impact and the overall theme that kind of got us the nomination. So we were delighted that with that. We were really over the moon with it. Um, and it just kind of made me giggle that that's the third time I've taken that display board. <laughs> and finally, I got a best RP nomination for it, um, which I didn't think it deserved at all, uh, which is cool, which is really, really good fun. And I hope also um, anyone who's followed the vlogs for a while will know that at Throne of Skulls last year, I was disappointed to not get a best army nomination. And so I hope this validates this because... Back then I said, I didn't get a nomination, and honestly I thought I deserved one, whereas this time I did get a nomination, I'm saying, honestly, I don't think I deserved it. So it, do it does go both ways, I'm not just bitter and angry. Um, I didn't think <laughs> we should have been nominated, but of course we were delighted to get one, so thank you to the guys who nominated us, that was pretty cool. Um, and then we moved into the penultimate game, and we were playing um, Tom Underwood and James Underwood uh, with their Rohan army, with the, their team name was the Magnificent Horse. That was very appropriate. So they were all Rohan. Uh, their, their whole army was um, was was Rohan. I think it was a Riders of Theoden, Legendary Legion. And this was Clash of Champions, which I'm pretty sure is just... Um, is it Clash of Champions? What's it called? Yeah, Clash of Champions, which is Contest of Champions, but doubles. So it's a combined kill count. So it's... Um, he had Theoden and Aemer as the two army leaders, and we had Imrahil and Boromir. And it's basically going to swing on the total kills of Imrahil and Boromir against the total kills of um, Theoden and Aemer. Uh, you also get um, two victory points for an enemy leader that's killed in combat by one of your team's leaders. And then a victory point for breaking the enemy at the end of the game. Um, so yeah, and there's also... Um, if which are, when you're two leaders, when one of them's behind the other one, um, they get plus one to wound in a fight, which is which is mega. Um, so yeah, we deployed, and I have got I've got a photo of early on in this, but I don't think it's not deployments. It's when they clash, but obviously they had bows, so they they sat back and managed to get. I, th I think you can deploy twenty four inches on. So I think I think they got one turn of shooting at us. Basically, I think we were able to move up. Um, and then we, we gambled on the heroic move. I, th I think we moved into charge range so that we'd avoid a second round of shooting. Um, we got some shooting, which didn't do too much. Our, our key heroes kept their horses, which which was cool. Um, and then it's always a bit terrifying when you 30 odd cows shoot at you. And then we charged, and I feel like we got the heroics. I feel like we got to. We got to move first, I think. And what we did was we charged. We tagged 
Theoden and we tagged AMR with one knight and then we put Imrahil and Boromir on the on the rider of Rohan next to them. Obviously the idea being um, we'd heroic combat with our two heroes into them um, and see if, you know, it would do the, the classic thing, we'll call heroic combats and if they call heroic strikes we'll just go into some other chaff and if they don't call heroic strikes we'll go into them. And um, that was the plan <laughs> and what was quite fun was then, I think in that first turn, I think they called death. So they were like, well look, every hero's in combat, it's going to be the best chance we get to do it. And um, and Theoden did a heroic combat, which I, I wouldn't go as far as say it was a mistake, but we certainly didn't expect. And so when he called a combat, he then won the roll off, and Theoden killed the guy who was fighting, and charged into Imrahil. Which we <laughs> were like, this is unusual, This, I mean, that's what we wanted. Um, and obviously um, he wouldn't get the, you know, and Theoden was lower fight value, so I think it was just a big ballsy move, and I think they just thought, well, you know, he it's all or nothing on the leader, and if we kill him, you know, jobs are good and whatever. And then Imrahil won the fight, and I'm pretty sure Adam one-turned him. I remember, uh, yeah, because I'm sure I said, you know, bear in mind Theoden's got two wounds and a fate, and, and I think, like, uh, Imrahil just had three attacks. And I was like, you're never going to kill him in one. So kill Snowmane, so he's off his horse. And Adam was like, no, I'm going for him. And he chucked it, and he got something like 6-6-4. Six, six, and then I think... So I think he did two wounds to him, despite needing sixes to wound off three dice. And then they rolled a one for his fate, I think. And Theoden died on, like, turn two, as part of Theoden's heroic combat. I mean, it was gross. It was absolutely gross. And we were like, oh. So then suddenly... In terms of their kill count for the scenario, um, they've only got AMR, and we've got Boromir and Imrahil, and we've got the VPs, because Imrahil's killed Theoden. So suddenly, early on, we were in a very, very, very good position. Uh, the other thing is, whilst they had a lot of numbers, um, I don't know how we can see this. Yeah, if you can sort of see in the image, I'll put it up um, now, where, where the kind of forces first clashed, um, you'll sort of see that there was only so much space between this field and a wood, so they kind of had two ranks of Rohirrim. So on that, f on the first few, well, for most of the game actually, we were able to fight kind of one on one and pin the other horses back because they just couldn't get round us. So they couldn't bring their greater numbers to bear, which um, which was kind of huge. Um, and then obviously when when you know Rise of Theoden loses Theoden, they then lose their um, their fight bubble as well. So suddenly they're fight three, so they're all lower fight than us. And it just turned horribly in our favour. But, despite it turning horribly in our favour, AMR was still a nightmare. And I know that Boromir went AMR hunting, because we're, we're then in this kind of... Um, we're then in a slight kind of catch-22, where we obviously want to kill AMR to, to stop him fighting. But the best way of killing AMR, or our only real way of killing AMR, is with Boromir. And by doing that, you risk him getting the VPs for killing a leader and then potentially it's, you know if, if it goes the wrong way suddenly we've both killed a leader and it's just Boromir v Imrahil on or, sorry AMR v Imrahil on how many they kill and so as much as it had swung heavily in our favour trying to stop them getting back into it also allowed them to get back into it you know because you had to kind of um, commit and they had gambling being an absolute nightmare so you're trying to you know <laughs> You're trying to kind of work your way through um, AMR's might, but gambling kept game, giving him there. And they, they had the other hero as well. I think they had like Day of Wine in there. Um, probably had another one. And so Adam, I think, was doing his best to kind of, with his fight fives and his, his fight five knights and his fight um, six hero, was doing his best. They had Elfhelm, I think, I'm pretty sure they had Elfhelm, to mop up those other heroes just to get rid of them, to get rid of the might and that kind of stuff. And we eventually took down. Um, we eventually took down Gamling. And I don't really remember... I don't actually remember what happened with AMR at the end. I feel like we did get him. Um, eventually he ran out of might. And at that point, Boromir's higher fight value did it. But I could be wrong about that. So sorry, guys. I can't remember it. But um, yeah, we managed to get we managed to get the win in the end. Um, I, I don't know. But I think we might have tripled their kill count. I think it was quite a big win in the end. But 
I've just got to say, like, massive, massive thanks to Tom and James because they they were definitely still in it, but losing your leader or one of your leaders in turn two in a game that's all about how well your leaders do can be pretty dispiriting. But they they just took it in such good grace and were such lovely guys and fun to play against, and it was it was another just brilliant game that um that we loved and we were all kind of laughing about how the fact we brought these all mounted armies and because they were fighting each other it was just one attack on each side you know we robbed each other of our um, of our various cav bonuses but there we go it was another win for us and so obviously by that point um the way things work you're kind of like going we're on four wins out of five and bear in mind this is this isn't a normal tournament where it's just about winning you know it's like we're in this i've always i've always argued um that, you know, I've been lucky enough to have some success at Throne Skulls in the past, that of six games, if you win four games or more, you can win a Throne of Skulls. You don't need to win five, you don't need to win six. It's not to say it won't help, but if you if you win four games and the best best vote, best um, army votes and best game votes go your way, you can win it. And, you, you know, in theory, you can do it on less. I saw the guys who won the doubles years ago with the Dwarf Army. I feel like they only won two games or three games, but they mopped up on the other, um, on the other points. Um, so suddenly you're kind of like, well, we've got our four. I was like, oh, we've got our four wins. We remember a shot, you know, if, if irrelevant the next game. Like we've had, we've had really good games. People are enjoying, you know, we've seen people seem to be enjoying them. People like our army. We might be in with a shot of a decent place in here. It. It's going remarkably well. Um, and then for our final game, we got play. We got paired up against um, was it Lord of the Imps? Were they called? Um, Something like Imps of Moria, that was it. It's the Imps of Moria, uh, which was um, Chris um, Otterburn and his partner Ben. And um, and what was great was they had played our brothers in arms, Jay and Tom, in day one. And they'd beaten Jay and Tom. So we were after some uh, Wanderer's Revenge. And Total Conquest, which is the last double scenario, um, is it's basically domination. It's kind of f a five pip um, domination. So you got you know the pips on a dice, the five pips on a dice. That's where the objectives are around the table, um, and you enter via maelstrom. maelstrom but um, the leaders' warbands. Uh, it's the, the is it just one warband or is it a force? Primary force. So half half the force begin in the middle fighting each other. So um, and that was my force, and I think it was, I think it was Ben's force. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, um, and it was a Moria army, um, but it had it had some nasty tricks in it. You know, it had Drizag and it had the spiders. Um, I don't think they had a bat swarm. Uh, they had Dweller in the Dark, which was pretty scary. And um, I ended up deploying, so it's Boromir and all his knights against their leader, who was uh, Drizag. Ashrak was there as well, a Dweller in the Dark, and then a whole bunch of um, goblins and prowlers. And then... Maybe a couple of marauders. I think a couple of marauders are in that. Yes, it looks like I'm just looking at the picture now. It looks like there were three marauders as well. And so we deployed um, against each other. And the only thing that surprised me because I was terrified of the dweller. I think a dweller is a scary, scary monster to fight. And he fights seven. And the only thing that surprised me was that the dweller was deployed in the front rank. Um, he wasn't protected by anything. And so the you know the inevitable right move came off and and we won it and I charged and I just went no guts no glory and I just charged Boromir straight into the dweller and I think I managed to get one more knight onto him and then all my knights just charged a goblin and again because of the scenery and because of the way the board worked I was kind of able I don't think I even cared about getting one on ones because I you know I'd have the fight value and I just trusted in the two attacks for charging and the banner. I put Boromir in the middle so everyone was kind of three attacks, fight four on the charge. And um, and we we say we didn't want any chance of kind of Boromir being hurled or the banner being killed, so we saved the dweller. And the knights just obliterated the goblins. I I've it's probably the best turn I've I've ever had in in a game. I've never seen it like like almost every single combat went my way, and of course then they're knocked down. And they, you know, you're killing them on fours on two dice, and I just completely obliterated this line of goblins. And I've never, I've never seen anything like it. I was like, oh, and then we got to the Boromir fight, charged in, and Boromir, Boromir heroic struck to get high enough to beat the, um, so he's guaranteed to be high fight value, 
charged in and then killed the dweller in the dark in one go um, with his knight friend. I can't remember. It probably used a couple. It probably took a might point or two to tip the wounds, but you get whatever it is: four attacks from Boromir, two attacks from the knight. I think the Dweller's Defence 5, isn't he? So Boromir needed 5s and the Knight needed 4s. And we did the we did enough wings and took out the Dweller in one go. And it was like, wow. And so, yeah, personally, potentially, I think a little mistake there in not, not putting a couple of Goblins in front of the Dweller just to make sure that he couldn't be one turn by Boromir. But equally, I think they were thinking, well, if they do that, maybe then the Dweller doesn't get to fight because the Goblins would kind of trap him in place. But... Um, yeah, and suddenly it wasn't, you know, the, the, obviously the game is far from over, but what you've suddenly done is kind of taken out a quarter of their army in one turn for very, very little loss. Um, and yeah, it was it was spectacular. Uh, meanwhile, as I think you've seen a photo, um, Adam starts riding on uh, with his Knights of Dolomroth. That at that point we decided we could, we you can see, um, what's, uh, I'm just checking out to see what picture I've got. You can see how the army looks with the goblins in the in the top left corner, and we'd originally thought that maybe Adam was going to have to fight those, but because that turn had gone so well, we were just thought, well, actually, all that needs to happen, all you need to do, is now um, come on behind me, and kind of shore up shore up the line. We must have made that decision first, actually, because you can see in this picture the dweller's still alive. So obviously we'd moved him on in that, but we decided to shore up the line. Um, based on deployment, I think, um, rather than rather than trying to risk Adam's army coming on behind the other warrior army or whatever. Um, but yeah, then the next turn, you know, I, I think I, I think I won the roll off again, and I was able to charge into uh, Drizag, uh, not Drizag Dervers, and charge into Ashrak, and killed them. And basically, just by the end of the second turn, that whole goblin army in the middle had been just wiped out, just utterly destroyed. And that then meant that we were basically holding um, or in control of the central objective. Um, there was one one of the objectives is the drum, which you can see there, kind of Adam's knights kind of riding around. Um, and then I think there was another objective somewhere in the back right somewhere. And so we were basically in control of three objectives at that point and were clearly well on the way to breaking the army. And so things were going pretty, you know, about as well as could happen. And then Chris's army kind of came in with some enraged spiders and that kind of stuff and some more wild marauders. But by that point, you know, we, that some of the faster stuff from his army was arriving a bit piecemeal and we basically had our full force to just kind of um, take them down. And so we were just able to protect the objectives we had and gradually kind of push up. Um, again, on, on the f you can see potentially that there's, a, um, there's also an objective in that field in the top right and we were able to grab that one. We did break them. And then obviously with goblins and stuff, they started running away. And again, I can't, I can't, I don't think we, I don't think we got the top left one. I think in that, at that point we were like, you know, that either the game ran out or I'm not sure when it ended or time ran out or something, but they, they held the top one. But I, th I feel like we were able to get the other four um, and break them and kill the leaders and all those kind of things. So, um, so yeah, it was a it was a massive, massive win. But again, like massive, massive thanks to Chris and Ben. Their, their army was beautiful as well. We definitely voted their army for one of our two favorite armies because the Moria army was just beautiful. And we we said it's even more remarkable because I think um, I think often maybe I'm being unfair here, but I think often people speed paint Moria. I, th I think you know they're old models. People might have had them for a long time. It's certainly the case of me. And people speed paint them and they dry brush them. And so Moria armies often don't look fantastic, I think. But this army was just stunning. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, like, you know, I think that all the bows have been strung and you know, there was lots of really cool stuff on the bases and all the objectives were brilliant and it was just it was just beautiful. So I think Chris had done most of the painting on that one, I think. But massive, massive props to him. Um, because his his stuff was just incredible. So yeah, it was beautiful. But yeah, so we then finished on um it was another great game, sorry if I haven't said that, but they were they were great, they were really nice guys, lovely, lovely to hang out with, lovely to chat to. Um and so we finished um the tournament on five wins. Um and and one loss. And certainly for our point, more far more importantly, genuinely just six amazing games. Six really, really lovely games against twelve guys. And after I said this about Articon that 
in all the games of article I didn't play one single arsehole and then that that wrote, that's continued to this um, and I just it's it's just been great it's just I don't I don't know if the community is becoming more chilled out you know there's never a lot of those people around but normally at you know these events you'd, you'd you'd come up against one where you go no you're a bit too game you're a bit too competitive or something but there's nothing just lovely 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 people and I can't stress and I said it earlier I can't stress how much fun our army was to use um it was just it was just brilliant I didn't actually talk about it oh hang on I didn't mention it to you but there I've got a final positions um photo there where you can sort of see it looks like a ministerial guy claim, claim oh no there's a knight claiming one at the back isn't there there's Rough knight claim, claiming an objective at the back both of the back ones um, my knights are holding the centre objective and then those knights I don't know if that's the final positions but those knights were kind of I think they took that off the three wards in the top right corner um, so you can see there the kind of the kind of final positions and as you can see in the middle we've still got What's fine there? This sort of looks like we've got eight knights there that look like they're kind of fighting against kind of ten goblins and a spider. So they, those things are pretty much in our um, in our favour. And there's more knights under those Gilius ruins as well, aren't there? Um, and then you've got just Drizag, Drizag and his little um, bodyguards desperately um, guarding that final objective. So yeah, they, those are the final um, victory conditions. Um, but the army was just so much fun to use. Uh, just it's so much fun. It's you know it's all come back complete by chance, largely due to Scott Newman sending me those knights for Secret Santa, and it all just kind of building organically this year. And you know it was great using it. Um, I'll take it to the the doubles at Ardicon, and you know as all mounted, um, and it was great using lots of knights in uh, teams and stuff. But just the all mounted Gondor seeing that many knights charging with lances and dipping the lances and screaming for Gondor, it was just it was just brilliant. It's the most most fun about a tournament in a very long time and this year has been a tour, a, a series of tournaments where I've had a lot of fun. Um so yeah it was an, it was an absolute blast. Um so yeah we finished on five five wins. Um I'm not gonna say I, I'm not gonna say who we gave most sporting to for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think it's particularly fair. I don't think it's a nice thing to kind of admit um, who you picked one side over the others uh, but the other reason is I can't remember um, we had we had six amazing games we got to pick two of them and really it could have gone to any of them so I, I don't really remember who we gave it to and I have a feeling that I know at least one of them um, but I don't want to say but um, it's just a massive thanks to our um, all of our opponents because they were all just lovely and then favourite army I can't remember one of them, but one of them we definitely gave to the Moria Army because we just thought that was really, really, really beautiful. Um, so well done to Chris and Ben for that. You got, our, you definitely got our vote for that. So there we go. So then we all settled, and um, I, I'm not going to lie. At that point, um, again, knowing how the scoring works, I thought we were in with a pretty good chance of um, of getting a podium. Because um, you're suddenly like, okay, we've got five wins and we've had six really enjoyable games with a cool army. I think this crossed for a podium, and so as the awards came around, we didn't get third place, and we didn't get second place. We got first place. <laughs> Troker Bird only went and bloody won it. Amazing! Um, so yeah, we were over the moon, and um, not only that, just before they announced who it was. It was first place and most sporting team. So we got the most sporting team and we got first place. Now those things aren't as disparate as they might be at GT because the whole point is if you've got most sporting team, you've got a ton of points which might help you place well. But we won five games. Um, so got I'll get the I'll get the points out here just so I don't screw this bit up. We won five games. And it, uh, come on, there we go. So yeah, we got twenty nine points out of thirty six, which mean must mean we got. How's that work? Is that is that six? That's four sixes and a five, isn't it? Um, so we got four major wins and a minor win. I think gave us twenty nine game points, um, and then we got 
18 points for favourite game, which is six times three. So we got all six favourite game votes from our opponents, which is just just awesome. So that, that's why we won um, like most sporting team. So from the bottom of my heart, and Adam feels the same, thank you so much to our opponents for voting. Because they, you know, the reason we won this is because of our opponents. You know, it's not because of us; it's our opponents voting for us. So cheers to to all the guys who we played against. It was really incredibly humbling to get to get all six of those, and it, it really meant the world to us. And that that's cool because it means that you know we played, and and often I think you give your favourite game votes to people you've beaten. We won five games, which means you know five people gave it to us having lost to us um, which is really 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 humbling and I hope is a is a, is a really nice encouragement for how we try and play the game um, and it was really really rewarding to get that sort of thing and then we got um, we got uh, four votes for four out of six votes for favourite army as well um, which again we kind of laughed at because the army's not that nicely painted or whatever uh, but um, it's 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 not just about the painting, it's how fun the army is. And I think people just really, really enjoyed playing our our force, essentially, playing that kind of, um, you know, that uh, all-mounted force that doesn't shoot you, it just kind of runs towards you. So that was that was an absolute delight. So, yeah, we, we ended up with, was it, it's out of 72, we ended up with a score of 59 out of 72. So we dropped um, six, we dropped seven points from the games and we dropped six points from the... Um, from their favourite army squad, but yeah, we won, and we were we were just over the <laughs> absolutely over the moon. Me and me and them, we managed to get second at this event, I think pre-pandemic 2018 or something, and we were delighted with that. But yeah, to get to get first, let's get another gold um, ring statue, um, and get it with Adam as well, like you know, um, ride into all with Troke and Burn, was was unbelievably exciting and and great. Um, I want to say a special well done to um, a few other people, um, Dan Entwistle and Matthew Davis, who are um, both uh, B Simons. Uh, they came third place overall. <laughs> well done, guys! Um, and they also won best army with this phenomenal display board they've done. They had a Candon Easterling Alliance, and they had this fantastic display board. I'm sure you've seen it by now. It was absolutely wonderful. And so they, they were full on throwing a skulls mode, you know, where people were loving their army and they were also grinding out some wins. What did they get? They got 30 points, so that sounds like five major wins to me. So they were also doing incredibly well. And we, we thought they were going to win, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, you guys. Um, we, we pitched you at the end there, but massive, massive congrats on Best Army. It's very much deserved. And the other one I wanted to shout out, and I'm not going to go through every beast on here, but I want to say a massive, massive well done to Chris and Katie, the Websters, who finished seventh place. And I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but they, it sounds like this is a nice thing to say, but it, um, it can come across wrong. They only got 13 points for their games, which I think means they got two major wins, three major losses and one minor loss. So I think that's how that works. Uh, two wins and four losses. But they then got... Uh, 12 points for, um, uh, so they got four votes for, for best game and all six votes for best army. So they absolutely cleaned up on, on the soft scores. And they are, I can't stress how much higher they are than everyone else with their gaming score. So everyone in the top 14 teams got 20, got 20 points for, um, their game scores or more, whereas they only got 13. But because they were so lovely and their army was so cool, they got catapulted up and finished seventh. And their army was amazing. It was a kind of, I think Kay described it as the wedding that she wanted. So they had bay awnings and they had Mercury Rangers and they had a display board where a bay awning was marrying a Mercury Ranger. And one of the bay awnings was converted to look like Chris and one of the Mercury Rangers was converted to look like Kay. And it just looked absolutely brilliant. Um, and so, yeah, massive, massive props to them. And I, that that is just why I love Throne of Skulls. That just really super nice people with a gorgeous army played in a great spirit. They had bay awnings and people voted for them a lot for favourite game. It's not the army, it's how you play it. Um can can then clean up and do super, super well. So a uh, massive well done to them. And massive well done to all the other B Simers who were there, because there was loads of spam and it was it was good fun. So there we go. That's um that's my sort of review 
of doubles. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how happy I was. I can't tell you how... It's always, it's easy to say when you win, but I can't tell you how much we weren't expecting to win. You know, we went, we went with all-mounted Gondor, for God's sake, and just were proud of the way we played. I think we played well and we, we enjoyed playing together and then played in a good spirit and had cool models and got the kind of the ultimate reward. Which probably isn't this. I think I think this is I think this is the ultimate reward. And um, this is the you know the kind of hardest one to win. Um but really, really, really chuffed and delighted and came home and it's I, I put this on the Facebook post when I write about it. I've I've been lucky in my wargaming career. I've had a lot of great events, and I've had a lot. I've been lucky enough to get a lot of successes. This is right up there. This is right up there with my happiest events I've I've ever been to, and my the, the wins that I'm proudest of. Um, so yeah, all all the more so because I got to do it side by side with a friend. Um, so yeah, um, massive thanks to Adam for being a being fifty percent of the project as always, and um, and Trokenburn will ride to war again. Um, next year. So there we go. I think that's um, I think that's enough gushiness. I don't I don't think I've missed anything. Apologies to anything I have done. Sorry to all the winners that I haven't mentioned all that. It was just um, it was a brilliant, 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 brilliant weekend that just reminded me, as if I need to remind you just why I love those Warhammer World events so much. So well done to Ed and Chris and the entire events team. Uh, you did an amazing job. So yes, that would normally now. Uh, be the end of the vlog and I know that after a relatively short vlog about 20 minutes this must be about an hour uh, this bit um, but I do actually have another piece of admin to go through which is some more catching up on our how we're doing for the year so we have done up to this point if we got up to May let me check I'm gonna not I'm gonna drop all pretense that I'm not looking at a laptop here uh, yes so we've done up to May so far in my uh, in my backlog clearing for the year and so at the end of May um, we had done let me find this uh, there it is. so I believe the last figures you heard were that I had bought 20 models I had painted 36 models and I'd sold one so let's see how we got on uh, so in June um, we were still preparing for the uh, SPG issue 14 photo shoot which is uh, out somewhere, so I can't show you. Uh, but yeah, issue 14 of SPG is out now. Get it. Um, so for that, I painted um, Defenders of Rohan Aema, which was cool, one with the helmet under his um, arm. I painted a new Heroes of Helm's Deep Aragorn, and I painted my new version of Legla. So I painted three models. Um, so that got me up to uh, 39 for the year. I didn't buy any, and I didn't sell any. So not many models, but that was a full-on month of SPG production. I painted three heroes, so pretty cool. So by the end of June, bought 20, painted 39, sold one. In July, um, I then carried on. Again, I think you can see this is a, a very much a um, as an SPG. Uh, oh, no, it's not. It's that I started painting things that I didn't finish. That's what happened. So the only model I actually finished in the whole of July was Gollum. I painted up a Gollum for our Gollum um, b sum stream. Um, but I also bought all the stuff I needed for Articon. Um, so I bought four high elves with spear, I bought a Sildur on horse, even though I didn't um, I didn't actually um, paint him. I bought a Lendil on horse, um, I bought three Numenor Spearmen and three Numenor Bowmen. So that's six, ten. It's twelve models I bought that that month, which was which is a bit grim, and only one that I painted. So um, yeah, we ended up with um, 32 models bought for the year, um, 40 painted for the year, and one sold. But as I said, whilst I only painted one in July, I was painting all that last Alliance stuff. I just hadn't finished any of it. So August gets a bit better. So not a great month for July either in terms of painting or buying. But fingers crossed, it um, it evens out. <laughs> And then finally, for this vlog, um, we get to September, which should hopefully be a little bit more positive. Yeah, kind of. Um, so in September, I did buy some more models. I treated myself, um, whenever I'm at Warhammer World, I, I tend to try and pick something up that's cool. And I picked up Helm Hammerhand, because um, I didn't have him. I thought, that's a cool model. Um, I've got a lot of Rohan stuff, I quite like him. So I picked him up, that's two models. And I also picked up the six Knights of Minas Tirith, that I painted in this vlog. So I bought eight more models. 
So you were seeing here where my, my numbers, my plans for the year have been skewed by unexpected projects. Like I, I never planned on doing this all-mounted Gondor army. So bought another six knights, which I wasn't planning, so not great. So bought another eight models. But I did manage to um, paint. No, hang on, no, no, something terrible's happened. I've skipped August. <laughs> I've skipped August, that is September. Forgive me, I'll get to that in a minute. Right, so we're on, th in July, we're on 32 bought, 40 painted, one for the year. I was just realising, where are all my painted um, Last Lines models? So August, in fact, was only one model. And do you know what model it was? It was the Get Off The Road diorama, um, which I think is pretty cool. Or any controversial opinion. Um, that's one model, because it's one model on a base. It's the ring wraith is a model. Everything else is a scenic base for that ring wraith. You can't, that's that's my own kind of headcanon. You can't use those hobbits in the game. Um, it's a piece of scenery. So one model for the Wraith. And I painted four High Elves with Shield, four Numenorians, Gilglad mounted and Lendil mounted. Um, so that's, the, as I said, the stuff I started painting in July, I finished in August. So that was painted ten in August, bought one, and um, and sold none. So by the end of August, I had bought 33, um, painted 50, and sold one. So then we're into September, and in September, when I went to this event, I picked up Helm Hammerhand, as I said, the two, and I'd also before that picked up six knights that I needed for this event. So I bought another eight, and then I painted the Wraith. I painted the Get Off the Road Wraith. I was trying to get him done in 48 hours, but I failed. But how am I going to deal with that? Find out in the next vlog. Um, I painted then my two more two extra Numenorians, which you saw in the last vlog when I got back from Articon, and I painted the six Knights of Minas Tirith that you've seen in this vlog. So pretty successful. So I painted nine models in September, but I did have to buy eight. But the good news is, six of those I bought got painted in the same month, so that's fine. Six new models in, but painted them immediately. And I didn't sell any. So by the end of September, which is um, kind of where we are at the end of this vlog, I have bought 41 models, I've painted 59, and I've sold one. And that is me bang up to date. So there we go. Um, looking pretty good, three months to go. Remember that what the plan is for the year is to complete Hobby Bingo, paint 100 models, and reduce my backlog by 5%. Hobby Bingo is looking pretty good at the moment. 59 models with three months to go. I might get to 100, it's looking a bit tight. Um, am I going to reduce my backlog by 5%? I don't think so. I think I've bought too many models now. You know, if I bought 40 and I've only painted 60 so far, we'll have to see how the last three months go. But there we go, those are my, that's the latest update. And that is um, almost, almost the very end of the vlog. And all that I now get to do is, um, is turn to the future. And I have a wonderful piece of news for you. I've caught up. Um, my last, I believe, if you go back and look at it, my last five vlogs have been published over something like the last six weeks, but they've dealt with the last seven and a half months, which has been gross. So I, um, I've, uh, let me just pull this over so I get the dates right. Um, I've been desperately, if you, if you've seen, if you've been watching these things and I hope you've been watching these things. I've been catching up, I had to catch up on the GT, I had to catch up on Teams, I had to catch up on Articon, and I had to catch up on, on doubles, all kind of desperately trying to think back on all the games, and hopefully they've become better reviews as I've gone, because I've been able to remember more of it, and I'm now done, I'm caught up, um, and so all that kind of that backlog, by the time you see this one, uh, by the time you see this vlog, that backlog is, is done and cleared. And despite there being a period of like, I don't know, four months or something in the middle of the year where you didn't get any vlogs, you've now caught up on all that stuff. And so, as I said, I've just caught you up until on an event which took place um, at the right at the end of September. And um, I've just given you my numbers um, up to the end of September. And I imagine as you're watching this, it is somewhere around the 13th of November something like that so I'm only kind of what you're now seeing is I'm only a month behind um, so the good news is um, what we were now going to see uh, you wouldn't believe it all my attention is now going to turn to Throne of Skulls and you will now start seeing vlogs which won't have event reviews because I don't have any more event reviews to, <laughs> to kind of catch up on and you are still going to get 
uh, a flood of vlogs kind of catching up more at the kind of speed and length that I would normally like them to be where they were where they'd be a bit shorter and the super super great news on that is the next vlog is already completely finished and edited already so that'll be that'll be done soon so yeah we are entering um, potentially my favorite period of the hobby year which is the the run-ups of Throne of Skulls now um, so as you're watching this it's mid-November um, and I recorded this about a week ago and now the next stuff you're going to be seeing the next bit of hobby you're going to be seeing is only going from the start of November really so kind of October um, in October yeah I didn't paint a lot in October um, again I think I started some prep work so you're going to start the next vlog you'll see um, will actually be only dealing with stuff from about two weeks ago when you see it. Um, so we're, we are properly back up to date, which is a huge, huge relief. So yeah, um, that's what will be happening next, and I'll um, I'll be leading you into my Throne of Skulls uh, journey. And I think at the moment, I think there'll be four vlogs leading up to Throne of Skulls, or some of them will be published after Throne of Skulls. But there's going to be four vlogs documenting my Throne of Skulls journey, um, which I am uh, deeply excited to share with you as always, including the highs and lows of getting stressed before the event and probably ending up in a shed in the cold in winter. So there we go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you got some painting done. Um, Warhammer World doubles, Troke and Burn, glorious, glorious, wondrous scenes. Um, it's been a lot of fun um, recounting it and now I can genuinely relax a bit about this huge hobby vlog backlog that I've had built up over me over the last six months and kind of... Um, yeah, hopefully get back to enjoying these things um, I hope you enjoyed this if you have please 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 leave a comment below it means more to me than anything it's the most important thing I care about it more than subscribers, patrons, anything um, if you've watched the video please leave a comment just say um, what you thought about it that would be super super cool um, subscribe if you haven't already there's a patron link down below if you want to join our awesome community um, there's a link for 7 Seat Collectibles down there, an affiliate link if you want to buy your hobby stuff through there. And other than that, I'll see you in my next hobby vlog, which will be very, very soon, or on the next live stream here on Battle Streams in Middle Earth. Mm -hmm.